everyone, Feedy here, here and welcome back to another Destiny 2 build for this week's main content. Today's build will focus around grenades, specifically fusion grenades, because who doesn't love them? Well, a lot of people from what I can tell, but with this build that we have for today, we can change that negative thought to a positive one. All of this will be achieved of course with the well known exotic Ashen Wake, which will turn our main fusion grenades from stickies to impact grenades. But we're going to add in some extra buffs, mods and enhancements to make it even more deadly and more active for us, for whatever content we decide to play it with. Also, with the further use of Seasonal Dawn mod of Firepower to also up a game even more, and I'm talking a lot more effective in terms of where we're going to go with this. Chuck in some code the Devastator and a good amount of discipline, and what you have at the end of the video is a very unstable impact nade Ashen Wake build with a lot of OP damage that can in practice and theory take off two thirds of health from an ultra enemy or boss of your choice while also one shotting many players in PvP from left, right and center. If you love dodgeball and enjoy dominating others with sheer panic on their face then I'm very sure you'll enjoy this build so sit back, relax and let's get building. For the subclass of today's choice, we will be going with the Code of the Devastator so that we can make use of our Throne Hammer and Raw and Flame Time 3. Now, with Throne Hammer, this melee ability will allow us to one shot most add easily from a relatively safe distance and works incredibly well when combined with Raw and Flames, which also increases our melee ability up to times 3. You may have seen many builds out there where the user will focus on just using the Hammer and Raw and Flames with 1 2 Punch, for example, to pull off big numbers against bosses which is a very common setup for strikes or gambit. So in many ways, that's exactly what we're going to be doing, but all of this will focus into our fusion grenades instead, as raw and flames stacks and provides damage increases to all of our abilities, so melee and grenades. Basically, while using a hammer here and there, once we have fully charged our fusion grenade, we will go ahead and stack raw and flames for increased damage, and bingo, you now have a very powerful impact grenade. Simple stuff. The other two subclasses can't pull off this build synchronization ability so well, nor provide the same amount of impact damage that this setup has in mind, unless I use Code of the Siegebreaker for some Victors and Soul Warrior, but I feel that procking some Warrior and using it to recharge our grenades is useless for what we're going for. Plus, grenade regen is already covered via the stats and mods, and on top of that, we'll lose out on raw flames for that extra damage increase. So overall, it's effective, but not effective for this build in general. Now what's left over is of course Tireless Warrior and Burning Mal. Tireless Warrior is always going to be active as long as we use our hammer and pick it up after kill. And Burning Mal can be used whenever you feel it's the right time you use it, so against bosses or such, use it whenever you're ready. Grenades of choice here should be a doozy. Fusion grenades need to be selected or else the whole build won't work as Ash and Wake work with fusion grenades and nothing else. For the weapons, it's recommended you have a fully masked primary and secondary, and maybe a heavy as well if you wish, and to also have the demolitionist perk active on both or one or two of the weapons. Mainly have the demolitionist and masked weapon available on the main weapon that you choose to use all the time. For me, I've gone with the new Breachlight sidearm because of personal enjoyment of using it, but also, it offers quite a lot of flexibility in all areas it performs in. It has a good amount of damage for its frame type, which is perfect for killing the minor adds in one burst via crits, all round great stats, good recoil that can be easily controlled, great selection of perks to farm, and its amazing ammo size, which is great as we can add on backup mag to get a 34 magazine, which puts it on par to most pulse rifles in terms of how they work but not fully, it's just in comparison. Now another reason why I recommend that you have a think about using the same weapon as I'm using with the same perks is because of the aggressive nature you're going to be playing. You're going to be moving around a lot while making full use of your grenades and hammer, which is why using a pulse rifle or AR might not cut it in terms of movement. With a sidearm at hand and quick handling, you can go ahead and be as aggressive as you like as the sidearm can defend itself incredibly quite well actually against a number of manner of fights. And with a large magazine to size, this shouldn't be hard for you to pull off in general. If you feel like the sidearm of this caliber is not suitable for your playstyle, then you can always go for something else that fits the build a lot more better for you. A few examples, All Stringer, Lonesome, Last Man Standing, Bug Out Bag, etc. 
all these recommended are good alternatives to pick, with more freely available by simply searching what other weapons can roll with demolitionists. Now for the secondary, you have two choices as to where you want to branch off. Firstly, you can get another secondary that has demolitionists built into it, so you can cover your back if you're up against a major or ultra that needs a bit more oomph in terms of power. Secondly, you can pick whatever weapon you want, as long as it's fully mass work. And then your heavy can honestly be up to what you desire, so no limitations as to what you choose. But having it fully mass work is also beneficial if you have the chance to do so. For the stats, focus within the discipline stat, as this is a must to where reaching around 60 plus is recommended if you have to rightly roll armor to pull this off. Originally, I was going to go with around a 80 second cooldown for this area. However, I found that by doing that, I would have to reduce my 5 part mods for another discipline mod. And overall, it would impact the build very badly, so instead, Having around 70 or even 60 is the sweet spot as nothing is fully lost in terms of usage. For recovery and resilience, both of them are around the 50s which I always say is a sweet spot for any build you have in mind. But having them at the 40 ranges are also fine to a degree as using it against some bosses or PvP players, say for example certain actions that they do on their end, you could die by 2 hits from them instead of the standard 3 hits. So be careful and choose your stats wisely. For armor, you're going to need 3 seasonal dawn armor pieces with Sir's affinity, so you can slot in the 5 power mods, and this can be however you like. But your arms need to be the Ashton Wake exotic as without it, then, well like I said earlier, the build is kind of redundant. Now my Ashen Wake sadly has solar affinity, which means I miss out on using Impact Induction, which is a Arc Affinity exclusive mod. If I had the right affinity for my arms, then I could make use of the impact induction there and then, which will overall make the build even more effective than where it currently is. It's not a big loss, nor a big deal, but the effectiveness within the build will be incredibly noticeable if you had one. Your chest now will need to be a seasonal done armor, however, in this case here you can pick which affinity is best for you, as the only thing we will need in this case is the taking charge mod. So I would recommend you pick a chest piece that already has a high amount of stats in the ideal area, so recovery, resilience, discipline, maybe even strength, intelligence if you like. Something that will basically overall balance out the armor, so that all areas are properly covered. So with the armor covered, let's take a look at the mod you'll be rocking. We have the following. Head, discipline and firepower mod. Arm, discipline and fastball mod. Chest, Recovery, Molten Overload and Taking Charge mod. Leg, Resilience and Firepower mod. Mark, Innovation, Enhanced Bomber and Firepower mod. Great, so now that we've covered the main topic for the build, let us further break down as to how it will overall work. And for this, we will need to take a trip to the Tribute Hall. Against the Ogre, the damage we do with our impact grenade varies, and from it you can see how with Raw Flames and without it, how much damage you can pull off within a few hits, or generally from one singular nade. As you can see, without the buffs active, we can pull off around 17,862 damage, which also takes off around one third of its health. So overall, starts off pretty great on zone. Stacking now shows how well the damage proceeds to increase, and it really is incredibly noticeable once you start stacking up the damage. Raw and Flames times 1, 22,721. Raw and Flames times 2, 29,537. Raw and Flames times 3, 38,908. As shown, the higher the stack, the higher the overall damage, which in turn can completely and utterly annihilate the damage soaking ultras and also slap on a good amount of damage against bosses. Times 3 Raw and Flames with around 38k in damage is truly beautiful to look at, as this is simply with a fusion grenade. Think about it, a simple fusion grenade. Most times, using melee is a lot more easier to use compared to using grenades as you can pull off a high amount of damage with a few selected mods and gear and exotics and etc. Because it's all there, it's all accessible, it's all easy to basically put together. Grenades though, it's a bit tougher as there's not a lot of initial buffs available to allow you to increase your grenade damage by the tenfold, until now of course, well this has been around since a very good while, 
but with some mods now, we can further increase that damage to be even more, well, even more powerful. With this set in mind, you can play any content that revolves around bosses, high level ultras or even lower tier adds, and use this combination to cause a lot of havoc from a single grenade. And I'm talking one grenade can dispatch a group of 5 plus adds in an instant. But don't take my word on it, give it a try and generally see where I'm coming from. But there's more to the build that meets the eye. While charged with light, we can also activate a firepower mod, which will refund grenade energy upon using a grenade, which overall varies between how many you choose to add. Now I have 3 attached to my gear, which overall makes it so that I receive around 40% grenade energy back. Might not sound a lot to most people, but it is a game changer when combined with a main primary that has a demolitionist perk built into it, to further speed up the process, and basically also keep up our charge for light, as we have a fully masterwork weapon to boot. So overall, a great killing machine for a fully charged grenade at all times. As well as keeping our supplies stocked, we also have the Molten Overload mod to allow us to weaken our targets overall damage so that we can get up close and more personal if need be, and also useful for locking down players' abilities in PvP if you choose to use it. We also have the Innovation mod which provides a cooldown to a grenade upon picking up Orbs of Light, and enhanced bomb off for faster grenade cooldown upon using our class abilities, so in our case, using our barriers, and it does provide a good decent chunk. It looks like it provides around 30, maybe 40% energy back. Either way, it does bring back a lot. Everything you see here was put together so that it all works in unity and provide constant synergy for the user or alternatives if, for example, one certain mod or buff becomes inactive in a certain content or a certain scenario. We have multiple routes in terms of actually keeping our grenades up and going, which is why this build in PvE is fantastic for a grenade loving user, as it has everything you'll ever want, plus more if you wish to expand on it even further. Strikes, Gambic, Hero Missions, you name it, and this build will work in your favour for everything, including PvP. Yes, PvP. Now, think about it if you weaken a target by the first hit of your main primary or secondary, and then follow up with your grenade, you will one shot them, there and then. Or better off, if you could pull this off, it will work in your favour incredibly. Get Roman Flames times 1 or times 3, and then use it against a target to one shot a fully health guardian. It's that nasty, but it doesn't work all the times, but it's incredibly well when using it in some broad control, where enemy players were all going to be grouped up in one area. One fusion grenade is all that it takes to ruin their day. It's that nasty. But the downsides now for the build is not that many. In fact, there's only around one at best I've come across as a general issue. And that is the detonation of the grenade or the AoE blast from it. As shown from many of the gameplay, it can stand its ground incredibly well against most adds with the blast radius also easily wiping out any miners or lower health enemies that are nearby it. However, save frow gets up all in your face, and you decide to use your grenade to end them. It will end in your death, very brutally and painfully, as the damage being produced is the same amount of damage you would aim towards most enemies. Now, of course, this is not a big issue, as you can prevent this by easily backing off and keeping a safe distance. But this is one of the many causes you will come across in game a lot. Overall, few grenades have always been a thing in game where they are average at best against most players or enemies you face, and at best are usually declined from a lot of people because of their lack of damage, lack of stickiness, or both. With this setup in mind for Titan players, this is worth checking out because you have two ways to cause the one shot kills against ads or players alike which overall makes you near unstoppable in certain endgame content. Not fully, we'll get there one day, but it's almost there. But anyways, have fun with this build because it is incredibly easy to use and it will serve you a lot, especially up to endgame and especially if you're a new light player that simply needs a build to just get you there. But it's simple, it's fun, try it, love it, and then enhance it from there. So if you enjoyed the video, then please leave a like and a sub, 
and also follow me on Twitter to keep up to date with Destiny content if you did that type of stuff, link is down below. Once again, thanks for stopping by, and I'll see you guys in the next one.